Hey YouTube, remember the Mars video where I said I had a really easy idea that proved incredibly complicated? Well this time I had a really complex idea that proved incredibly easy. Let's add some rings to Saturn. There's quite a few ways to add rings around a planet, and this video was going to feature Cinema 4D Lite, but to be honest, I don't like C4D Lite. I like to see what I'm going to render while I'm in After Effects, and that's not always possible. Instead, Trafopa Cup, we're going to use Video Copilot's free all plugin, as I have done for the other videos in this series. And as always, if you can't use Orb for whatever reason, then check out Make and Mercury with CC Sphere. That'll get you to the starting point. Actually, if you do use CC Sphere for Saturn, there's a bit right at the end that you won't need to worry about. Okay, let's jump. I've got an HD comp here, and I'll create a new solid, which, say it with me, is layer new solid. Make it comp size and hit OK. Hit enter and rename the solid Saturn Orb. Now let's go to Effect Video Copilot VC Orb. Now let's add a texture. Quick Google search and I'm using this lovely 2K texture from Solar System Scope. Expand the map section and add it to the diffuse texture. Now normally I'd turn off the specular, but in this case Saturn is almost featureless, so I'm going to leave that alone and instead reduce the glossiness. Down to almost zero, 0 0.15 seems to bloom out quite nicely. I'll also add the texture as the bump layer, but reduce the intensity to 0.3. Now let's add a new null layer, which is layer, new, null object. Make it 3D and name it Saturn Null. Hit P to expose the position keyframes, and now use the position pick width on the orb effect on Saturn Orb to link the position to the null object's position. I'm going to do this for a couple of reasons. I'm going to parent a few other layers to the null object, and if I decide to move Saturn, all I have to do is move the null object, and everything will move with it too. And thirdly, I'm going to create a parallel light for my sun, and it makes it very easy to move the sun if its point of interest is the centre of the planet. So let's do that now. Go to Layer, New, Light. Make it a parallel light, and set it to 100%, and white, and click OK. Twirl down the transform settings and using the pit whip, link the point of interest to Saturn Null's position. Now for the light position, set X to 2000, Y to 540 and Z to something like 0. I might make this a little higher actually, but see how it stays pointing at the planet. Now for the rings. Solar System Scope also provided this really cool texture for Saturn's rings. But rather than drop it into this comp, drag the texture onto the new comp icon, because we're going to have to change it a bit. The texture is 2K, so let's edit the comp settings, which is composition, composition settings, make sure lock aspect ratio is unchecked, and then edit the height to make it the same as the width. Now let's add an adjustment layer, which is layer, new adjustment layer, and add the polar coordinates effect to this, which is effect, distort, polar coordinates. Swap the conversion to rectipolar, and whack the interpolation up to 100%. Yeah, that's not quite right, is it? Switch to the image layer, and hit R to expose the rotation controls, and set the rotation to 90 degrees. Now turn the adjustment layer off for a moment. We've got a narrow band of texture. No good. Hit S to show the scale and then uncheck the infinity symbol. We're going to want to adjust the X and Y values separately. Set X to 50% and ramp Y up all the way until both edges are off screen. Turn the adjustment layer's visibility back on and we have rings. Making sure the image is selected, hit P this time and adjust the Y coordinates. The rings grow bigger or smaller. Turn off the adjustment layer and you'll see Y. Polar coordinates is warping the layer around the centre, bringing the vertical sides into the centre and the horizontal ones to the outside. 
so anything at the bottom of the screen will be on the outside edge. Ok, switch back to our main satin comp and bring this rings comp in as a layer. Make it 3D and expand the material options and turn off accept lights. Now hit R for the rotation controls and set the X axis to minus 90 degrees. We can't see it because it's level with our view. So go to layer, new camera and that takes care of that and use the unified camera tool to move around until we can have a look at what we've got. So the way I see it we've got two problems. One, the planet isn't casting a shadow on the rings and two, the planet isn't in the middle of the rings. Let's deal with one first. Let's create a new solid, make it square this time. And using the ellipse mask tool, double click to draw an edge to edge mask. Hit enter and name it shadow caster. Make it 3D. In material options, turn off accept lights. Now let's expose the position properties of Saturn Null and Shadowcaster, and using the Pick Whip, link Shadowcaster to Saturn Null. Expose the position properties of our Sun, and use the arrow on the Shadowcaster layer to twirl down and expose both the position and rotation properties. This layer is going to throw a shadow for us, but to do that we need to have it act like a sphere. And to do that, we need to always face the sun. And fortunately, the look at expression gets us there. I'll click on orientation and then using the expression library, go to vector math look at. Highlight from point and use the pick whip to select Shadowcaster's own position. Then highlight at point and use the pick whip to select the sun's position. Switch to the top view and you can see the layer will now always face the sun. If I'd used parent to attach the layer to Saturn Null, the coordinates of position would have been thrown off by being set to zero. Now it's a little large, switch to left view and scale down the layer until it more or less matches the orb. Turn off Saturn Orb for a moment and expand the Shadowcaster layer material options. The problem we have is this blue circle. We want it to cast shadows but we don't want it to be seen by the camera. That's where the poorly named only property comes in. Pretty cool. Okay, now onto the problem of the planet needing to be inside the rings. Grab both Shadowcaster and the rings comp and drag them above Saturn Orb. Now select Saturn Orb and duplicate it, either by holding Ctrl and hitting D, or by going to Edit, Duplicate. Rename this Saturn Mat. Unlike VC Element, Orb doesn't have a world position mat, but it does have a hemisphere option. So let's remove the textures from diffuse and bump layers, and change the 3D object to hemisphere, and drag it above the rings comp and set the rings comp track map to alpha inverted. Which is great until I move the camera down below the rings position. If I turn on Saturn map for a moment you can see the problem. I'll turn off Saturn orb to make it easier to see. I can solve this problem again by setting the hemisphere's X rotation to 180. But that's no good, I don't have to keyframe the X rotation each time I move the camera. Expressions to the rescue! Know the Y position of our planet, it's Saturn Null's coordinates, and we know the Y position of the camera. Making sure the position properties of both are exposed. Alt click on Orb's X rotation, and let's add a simple IF statement. IF, open brackets, then use the pick whip to link to the camera's Y position, is less than and use the pick whip to link to Saturn Null's Y position. Then type curly bracket after the close bracket, zero. Close the curly bracket, type else, open curly, 180.
Now our matte layer will switch rotation and matte out the correct section of the rings no matter where we put the camera. Now that is cool. Okay, we're done. Except wouldn't it be good to be able to change the rings if I wanted to make an alien world for example. Let's switch back to our rings comp and turn off the adjustment layer. And let's create a new solid, make it comp sized. and then go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise. Switch the type to Dynamic and in the Transform settings uncheck the Uniform Scale and set the width to as high as it will go and the height to 25. Start to look familiar? Use the Rectangular Mask to mask off the top half and making sure it's below the adjustment layer Turn that layer on again. Now you can mess with the contrast and brightness and evolution as much as you want, but the top part of the circle isn't joined up. Hmm. Turn off the adjustment layer and then go to Effect, Distort, Mirror. Set the X property to 1024, and ta da! The right side now matches the left, and with the adjustment layer back on, our circle is joined. Two last steps. Go to Effect, Keying, Extract, and turn on the checkerboard. We're going to hide the black bits. Increase the black point value and decrease the white point value until you're happy. Now for a bit of fun. Go to Effect, Color Correction, Colorama, and in the output phase, choose the set of colors you like. And that really is it. You can have all sorts of fun with the fractal noise settings. Offset turbulence is pretty funky. The only real limitation with this method is that you can't really fly through the rings. They're just a 2D layer. For that, we need to use particles. And for how to do that, you'll have to wait until next time, when we'll be putting a ring around Uranus.